Hey, hello everybody, it's me Cyber Soldier, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to properly generate an audio via C Sharp. Yes, by learning this process you will produce some really cool bangers. Just keep in mind this tutorial is intended for C Sharp programming language and programs that runs on the net framework 4.0 and higher. Just make sure if it suits your standards. Before we jump into the programming, we need to understand the logic behind. So for the clarity, I wrote the list of all things we need to do. So we need a memory stream to write binary writer into that memory then we need a binary writer which will write the binary data then system media to even play the generated sound then we need a header for the sound and we need to write the header data into the binary writer then we will step on waveform algorithm and at the end we're gonna play play the sound via sound player but oh my god cyber soldier it's so hard you know it's so difficult uh, there are so many things to do just calm down okay brief air it might sound like a difficult process but in reality is really simple to understand so don't worry to prevent frustration just pay attention and don't skip any part that's really important otherwise you will copy and paste everything and it will not make sense okay so now we have a basic knowledge of the process so let's move on as a first we need to create an empty project so because we want to work with net framework we are gonna choose empty project net framework we name the project and choose the net framework it doesn't matter which one you chose just make sure that it's at least a 4.0 version okay now we can configure the project so now when we have our project loaded we have to set it up as well so first step is to create entry point for our application which is main function we will create it in the main class it's really important to change the output type to window application otherwise we would get the ugly console one which we don't want you might think that I will create a UI for it but actually that's not my plan I've set it to window application because I wanted to make it invisible to keep our application alive let's call the function application and run also make sure that you have all references like system.windowsforms and system. Then we're gonna create a new class for a PCM audio. In PCM class we write two functions. First is the main function for the PCM and the second will be used for waveform algorithm. Then we're gonna call the PCM function from the main function. Okay, the application is ready. So now we need to set up the PCM function. So we need to set up a memory stream and directly below we set up a binary writer. Just to make clear for you binary writer will write stuff into memory that's it by implementing system.media we can create a new sound player which will play the memory stream then we set the sound player to loop and we also dispose it if you don't know dispose will just clean it so we don't need to bother with memory leaks in the future and memory position is just an offset by setting the position to zero it will read the data from zero to the end so make sure that you set the position to zero so now it's time to set up the header for our PCM audio to do it properly we need to follow instruction from this side. To make it clear what these numbers even means, you need to pay attention on field size bytes. So field of size 4 is for integers, field of size 4 with letters is for byte arrays and field of size 2 is for short variables. And just one thing about letters, don't any under circumstances create a raw string, please don't do it, otherwise your code will not work and you will cry. Now when we know how to create the variables, we gonna follow the rest of the formula. Is the header done? Are you done? Are you sure? Are you really really sure that everything is done properly? If yes, that's awesome. Now we can write the data. Hey editor here. I forgot to mention the duration and number of samples. I will just explain it real quick. If you want to make the sound longer, then just change the duration and that's it. Before you write, follow the formula. It has to be done in exact same order. You can swap it, okay? And at the end of the binary writer, we gonna write the sound data. Now we need to create a waveform algorithm. We create a short array. In this short, we are gonna write the data. However, we cannot use the short array alone. We need to convert it to the byte array. To convert it to the byte array, we use buffer.blockcopy to copy short array to byte array. Just make it clear what has to be inside a block copy. The first parameter is a source array. The second is offset of that source array. All offsets are going to be set it to zero because it won't to transfer transfer the data from zero to the end and the third parameter is for destination array which is going to be the byte array the fourth parameter is destination offset so again zero and the last parameter stands for total length of the sound then write the byte array with all data into the binary writer now let's set up the list of all waveforms then we're gonna configure the short array function which will return sound data for our sound we need to set up array of frequencies as well then we're gonna call the short 
short array function, now we're gonna create an amplitude, which stands for volume. The maximum volume is a max value of short. For 8-bit audio, it would be 255. Last parameter, tempo, stands for speed of frequencies changes. Let's jump into the short array function. Here we're gonna set up some variables above. Short array wave is a wave which we will work with. Frequency row will get the frequencies for the array and tempo count will be used with tempo. Double time increment is for sawtooth and triangle waveform. Random is for white noise waveform. Switch statements will allow us to choose between all kinds of waveforms. And now, how to get the algorithm? Well, because I'm not that into the math, I decided to find it on this website. So we are gonna just copy and paste it and change the values. Let's implement the tempo, just like this. And now we can test our first generated audio. Awesome, let's add the rest. After some time I created four more waveforms. Just to be honest, I had to change the SA2 and the triangle wave because the algorithm from that side didn't work well. Okay, so let's test the rest. And yeah, that's it. Congratulations! Now you know how to generate the PCM audio in C Sharp. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. Also, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe my channel and like this video as well. Thank you and goodbye.